fitting proclamation of the coming Christmas celebration. Following our time today in worship is our annual congregational meeting. Details on that uh, will be provided at the conclusion of our worship as we remain for that meeting. By action of our church council, after today, in-person worship services are suspended indefinitely. We regret this decision. It is indeed a sad decision, but the correct one in light of the pandemic. Video recorded worship services will be available by way of our webpage and Facebook. We begin our worship today with our brief order for confession and forgiveness. I ask those who are able to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for us, and for His sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Behold, our King and Savior now draws near. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. When I was a small boy, one of the songs that I learned in Sunday school was This Little Light of Mine. People remember it? And one of the stanzas of that song spoke of not to hide it under a bushel, but to let it shine. All of our lessons today refer to the light of Christ and how we are to be witnesses to that light, how we are to let that light shine. We do that through loving and caring for other people, through our reverse Advent calendars that some of you return today. We do it through our prayers. We do it through our Christmas tree with lights and ornaments, through our Advent reading, through the candles on the altar, and what has become a tradition here at St. Mark's, at least as far as I'm concerned, is that I do it through my Christmas socks. One of these days, I'll have to put lights on them so they actually turn out. Remember that we are called, like our readings suggest, to let our light so shine that Christ may be visible even in the darkness of this pandemic. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice, I hate robbery and wrongdoing, I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among, among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice to the Lord. My whole being shall exalt my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bride, he decks himself with the garland, and as a bride, he burns herself with her jewels. For as the Lord, as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks, buddy. Please join me in reading responsibly our psalm of the day. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptized. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This Advent season, we have had the opportunity to remember and to celebrate saints whose feast days fall on Sundays of the Advent season. Today we remember Lucy, maiden of light. Lucie or Lucia speaks to us the good news of how in the midst of darkness the light of Christ shines. Lucy was a first century Christian. According to tradition, Lucy brought food and aid to other Christians hiding in the Roman catacombs. She would wear a wreath of lighted candles on her head to light her way. The lighted wreath made of holly and other evergreens left her hands free to carry as much food as possible. 
There is a picture of Lucy for you in your bulletin on the front cover in the upper right hand corner. Eventually, Lucy's ministry was uncovered by the authorities and she met a martyr's death on December the 13th. St. Lucy's Day today is viewed by the church as a festival of Advent. It reminds us all that the light of Christ has come and will come again. A light to pierce the darkness, bringing us the joy of forgiveness and the hope of life eternal. This is the message of all of Advent. This is the proclamation of our faith. This is what we preach and teach. We proclaim this faith in our first reading from Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This prophet is making it known that our God is a God who brings forgiveness, justice, joy, and freedom. Our God is a God who showers upon all the earth divine favor. Now we all know what favor is. It's approval, support, preference. This prophet is preaching grace. The prophet is preaching that God approves of us. God supports us. God prefers our company. Think about that. God, the creator of all the universe, prefers to be with us. God's creation. The prophet reminds us that God gives us what we need and is there for us. We proclaim this faith in our gospel reading. There was a man from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. John preached, I baptize you with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. John is a witness of Jesus. He is a witness to the light from God, which is Jesus. John constantly throws attention away from himself and points to the one who comes after him. He points to who Jesus is and what Jesus brings. We proclaim this faith by way of our dream. The lights and the Christmas speak of Christ. They proclaim him. They remind us of his birth, his teaching, his death, his resurrection. They cause us to remember and to share that Christmas isn't about the birth of a baby. It's about the coming of Christ who came among us as a baby. We proclaim this faith even in our annual meeting. The reports and budget before us tell us of the ways in which the light of Christ was told in 2020 and will be told in 2021. As Isaiah, as John, as Lucy were all witnesses to the light, so we are called to be witnesses to that same light. We are called to self-examination to truth-telling, to see ourselves as sinners in need of the truth with a capital T, the truth that only God provides. We were called to hear the good news that our God speaks and provides, that our God has forgiven us and will continue to forgive us. We are called to proclaim this hope to others through our worship, through our prayers, through our conduct, and even our budget. 
for our budget is actually our plan for funding ministry, funding the way in which the light is proclaimed. I don't have to tell you that this pandemic continues. The COVID-19 numbers keep going in the wrong direction. Hospitals, not to mention people, are at breaking points. People continue to die. As a concern for safety, this congregation, like many congregations, will suspend in-person worship after today. What we did not want to have happened, has happened. Some churches and pastors have pointed to our circumstances as signs. Signs of the end. Signs that the four horsemen of the apocalypse are riding toward us on the horizon. While this is certainly a theme of Advent, a theme of our faith, I would urge us to embrace a different interpretation. One much more in keeping with our readings for today. The third Sunday of Advent, due to the readings associated with it, has traditionally been seen as the Sunday of Jubilate, a Sunday of joy, proclaiming joy in the midst of despair. Certainly our readings for today do that. There's a message in there for us in this time, in our time. Do not permit the joy, the true joy that we know Christ brings, the joy that Christ is the world's true light, the joy of God's forgiveness, the joy of hope. Do not permit the news of COVID-19, the news of not being able to gather together for Christmas worship or for Christmas gatherings in your home or anything else to steal that joy. We're called to be witnesses. Witnesses of Christ in a world filled with darkness, sickness, lies, and death. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. We are to proclaim that in Christ, darkness has not, will not, will not ever gain the upper hand. We are to proclaim that healing in Christ, the healing of Christ, will replace sickness. We are to proclaim the truth, the real truth, not the truth we want to hear, not the truth that we think is correct, but the truth of Christ, that which replaces lies. We are to proclaim that in Christ, death has been destroyed forever. Our God makes this known in word and sacrament. Isaiah, John, and Lucy gave testimony to that. We are to share in their testimony, for we are to let our light so shine. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who embrace your love. Hear us, O God. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all creation. Extend your goodness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear us, O oh God. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be with the leaders of this and every nation as they govern them that your goodness and mercy may be revealed through their actions. Hear us, O oh God. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what is once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O oh God. God of the powerful and helpless. You clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and gathering, a place of healing, especially for the victims of COVID-19 and their families, as well as Liz, Richard, Grace, Diane, Ruth, Vanessa, Gary, Paul, Bob, Doris, Charles, Jerry, Gladys, Patricia, Diane, Joanne, Richard, Ashton, Pastor Frank Showers, Lucille, April, Lenny, Gary, Esteban, Elsie, Virginia, Cheryl, Bernadette, Greg, Kay, Steve, Judy, the family of Robert Dover. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O oh God. God of sinners and saints, we are grateful for those who have testified to your radiant love, especially Lucy Martyr Church and your servant partner. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness and the good news of resurrection. Hear us, O God. Draw near to us, O God, and re 
receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you.
Again, if you have difficulty, raise your hand so that an usher can assist you. The body, the blood of Christ, shed for you and for me. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A gentle reminder to please follow our exit procedure with regard to your offerings to St. Mark's, as well as the communion bags. You will note that the several ministries, activities, and worship services that are scheduled here at St. Mark's obviously will not be able to take place due to our suspension of worship services. Please keep these events in prayer nonetheless. In-person Christmas Eve worship will not take place here at St. Mark's this year. However, there will be a virtual worship service that will be available by way of our website and Facebook page sometime early Christmas Eve afternoon. Should you be in need of pastoral care, please contact the church office. Also, as you leave, there is a small gift that is available to each and every one of you. They are located on the tray as you exit. Please now stand to receive our blessing. The Creator of the stars, bless your heaven waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever.
I would like to call a much overdue congregational meeting to order. And the first item on the agenda, the council has unanimously nominated Ray Huff as our new council member. And so I would like to make the motion that we elect him as such. Do I have a second? Okay. Pam, a second. All those in favor? Aye. I'm sorry? All right, would someone else please make the motion that Ray? Pardon me? Yeah, that's what I meant. Okay, um, Pam Jensen has seconded. All those in Good morning. Um, we are to vote now on the budget for 2021. I hope you all had a chance to either look at the condensed version or the long version which was provided. Um, this was a tough year for us, uh, simply because we weren't sure exactly what's going to happen next year and everything going with COVID. Um, so there, we did take recommendations from the committees, put those into the, the budget. The only real big change has been was the hourly uh, wages, since we feel that the first um, quarter may be um, part, they're still on a part-time basis, so we reduced those. So you'll see the change in that. Um, the envelopes and pledges um, we found were compatible with this year, which is a, a, a true blessing from all you folks here to keep this church functioning. So. Um, for a vote. <laughs> the Ministry Committee has given this to the Council for approval now goes to the congregation. Do we need a second? We need a second. To a second. No. A second. It. Um, all those in favor, raise your hand. Any opposed? Thank you. Just a, a word of really affirmation and appreciation to con uh, congregation as well as to council for the way in which we have uh, conducted ourselves and still proclaim the gospel of Christ in spite of not so easy circumstances. And I thank you one and all for your commitment to St. Mark's. Thank you. And I would like to wish everyone a safe, Blessed Christmas and New Year. I need a motion to close the meeting. So moved. Karen and second. Kathy. Kathy. All those in 